of creating shows there and then selling them to the U.S. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, there's nobody that's in it. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, it was there. No, you were there? Yeah. Okay. When are we supposed to be there? Yeah, that was, 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 that to our panel today. Um, point of entry to the entertainment Hello. industry, short films or web series. Um, I'm Deb Gowells, I'm the moderator, and I'm gonna have everybody introduce check, themselves check. and say a little bit about themselves, and then I'll go. circle back to myself. So Hello. Hello. Um, just make sure the microphones are working. We're sharing. Testing. Yeah. Okay. Works. Yeah, let's do, why don't we just, we'll just share that. Yeah, okay. check. Checkity check. Okay, so Deborah. Check, check. Okay, okay. Network. We'll just share. Okay. Yeah. Let's, okay. Mm -hmm. Lana, miss you. Bonjour. <laughs> Ça va bien, oui? <laughs> okay. Oh, it's in English. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Deborah, why don't you start and just say a little bit about yourself and. Okay. okay. Um, hello, I'm Devo. Uh, I also am an instructor here at Columbia College Hollywood and I teach at USC short films. I work as the script coach for the summer program where students come from all over the world and they come in with a concept and in seven short weeks they end up with a short film, a work in progress, and then I help uh, get an industry panel together to give them critiques so they can go to the next level and the shorts have done really, really well. I'm also a filmmaker and uh, writer, director, producer, and former studio executive, and love, love, love um, empowering creatives. Um, and I was up at three writing a poem for two hours, so kind of, you know, just life is crazy, you know? So, but I'm really happy to be here. Thanks, Deb, for including me. And I have two books. Um, should I do them now or just mention? Oh. Anyway, I'll sh later. They're on shorts, and we'll talk about that. Okay, good. <laughs> Hey, uh, my name is Noam Dromi. Um, sort of, I think like most people nowadays, uh, wear numerous different hats. Uh, writer, producer. Uh, I run a company uh, based here in Los Angeles called Legion of Creatives, which is a digital content studio focused on how to tell stories across new platforms. I'm also a professor at Loyola Marymount University where I teach uh, a course in the screenwriting department on writing for digital formats. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Katja, I'm from Holland and I'm a filmmaker. Uh, I was trained as an actress um, and then I moved to filmmaking, directing, producing and acting in my own films since five years. And uh, I have my own Dutch production company and I'm a founding partner of a film studio here in North Hollywood. So yeah, to make it more accessible for people to actually make things. So. Yeah, it's great to be here and to hear other people talk and, you know, be an inspiration to each other. So thank you, for you Deborah, for having me. Hey, everybody. I'm Larry LeBeau, and I very much like Noam. I run a digital production studio called SXM. Um, we do a lot of network uh, series for digital platforms, um, and a lot of our content is branded content, so we work with a lot of different big brands like Samsung and Coca-Cola and Ikea um, to produce content for uh, digital digital uh, platforms. So um, aside from that, I run a, uh, another organization called New Filmmakers LA, um, and I am a professor at the San Francisco Art Institute up in San Francisco. Hi guys, my name is Evan Rodriguez. Um, I'm currently an acquisition executive for Shorts HD, the short movie channel. Uh, we uh, acquire content, short film content, um, and uh, I'm also a filmmaker, uh, producer, director, um, and yeah, that's kind of my daily duties for the week. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. That seems like a lot. And, um, you know, that's great. And I'm Deborah Gillels, and I'm a media consultant, and I'm also on the board of the LA Femme Film Festival, which is going to be next weekend, and the school is a sponsor. And, um, you know, and you know, basically, I work with a lot of younger filmmakers and other, you know, and, and obviously, like, you know, very established people, and you know, marketing and doing public relations as well. Okay, so I'm going to start. Uh, my first question is for Larry. Um, you know, like, um, what is the um, trajectory of the web series you're involved with? Are you trying to segue them to primetime series or are web series their own market? 
Um, you know, when we started, we started nine years ago doing this, and our first series um, was based on a short film called Supermarket of the Stars, which starred Ileana Douglas and had a bunch of cameos from actors like Jeff Goldblum and Daryl Hannah. Um, and it was really uh, a short that we felt played a lot like it could be an episodic series. And we had actually tried pitching it around for television and we didn't have any luck. And it was right around the time where YouTube was really getting popular and we thought, okay, how can we get this series paid for? Um, so we actually, we actually looked at it as an opportunity to do product integration. Um, and get brands involved in content to help pay for the series without jeopardizing the creative of what the show was about. Um, so that particular show was about um, an actress working at a supermarket. And we thought, OK, well, this actress could work anywhere. Um, so we were lucky enough to get I IKEA on board. But for us, definitely, um, the idea was always that if we can, t and we've done that a lot with short films over the years, we did it with Matumbo Goldberg for Comedy Central. We did it with Fact Checkers Unit for NBC. We did it with Control from NBC. And all of these were literally shorts that were at like Sundance Film Festival, South by Southwest, Tribeca. Um, the idea, though, was always to progress to sort of the next level. Like after making any of those series with a network online, we were hoping to be able to sell it to a network for television. Um, it has not yet happened, but um, but it's it's been great to be able to have a series very widely distributed where you can watch it on NBC on demand on your television, even though it was a format for digital. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, no, um, when you see a web series you really like, such as Night Owl, do you plan on further developing it for the web, or are you looking to launch it as a TV series? And you know, and if so, what's the process that you go through? Sure. So. For people who don't know, uh, we met through a mutual uh, filmmaker colleague who created a show called Night Owl, which interestingly enough was about a 24-hour grocery store. Um, uh, Seems to be a very popular yeah. format at this point. <laughs> so, so look, I think that there's this perception that if people are making short-form content that the end result always needs to be How's it going to be on TV? How's it going to be a film? You know, um, and I think that one of the things that we're definitely starting to observe, kind of overall in the marketplace, is there's this explosion of new formats, new captive audiences. People watching content on their phone through Verizon Go 90, or you know, people with um, Samsung televisions who have apps on the TV that have kind of short form programming that's not necessarily available anywhere else. So, for my company and my partners and I, uh, the objective ultimately is what best serves the narrative, what best serves the story. And I think in a number of instances, what you realize is there's clearly an audience cohort that buys into the idea of, I'm not, I don't have time to sit and watch 30 minutes or an hour, but if I can be entertained in seven minutes, let me find a way to do that. Um, and that can absolutely be a viable creative strategy, a viable economic, a uh, financial strategy as well. Um, and then in success, you've got things like, you know, one of my absolute favorite series, which started out as a show on Vimeo called High Maintenance and developed such a great following that's now, it's a, you know, a 30 minute show on HBO. Um, so Deborah, the answer to your question really is, it sort of depends because for us at the end of the day, um, we're in a really exciting time where story sort of permeates every aspect of our lives and sometimes it can make sense as a TV show and sometimes it can make sense as a digital series that's much shorter in length. So like with Night Owl, for example, so what would be the next step? Like sure. if you, like how are, I, how are you going to, you know, take it to the networks or how do you decide so, what you're going to do? So with Night Owl, we have a filmmaker who created uh, created and got financed sort of six standalone short form episodes, what would what one might consider kind of a first season, so to speak. So at this point, the, the notion is that asset exists, so build an audience, find a way to, you know, build, create awareness around that particular property. Uh, and there's, you know, specific um, distribution partnerships that that can happen and they can, you know, run the gamut from, you know, some that are certainly more, uh, female filmmaker centric like refinery 29 um you know there's a lot of the digital imprints of 
television networks that are very focused on incubation of short form shows. So that can include IFC, that it can include Comedy Central, but specifically the digital imprint of that. So in an instance like that, when I meet a filmmaker who's already done the heavy lifting, created the show, the objective is, who can we find that will do one of two things? First of all, distribute it. Uh, secondly, build a marketing platform around it because again, there's so many places to go that if you're not um, finding a way to build brand awareness around it, nobody's gonna necessarily know it's there. And then you look at maybe a second season of a digital show and as you start to build an audience and people get excited, then you look at expanding it. I think the challenge with a lot of filmmakers I meet is they're like, oh great, so we did a digital show and the plan is to turn it immediately into a TV show and sometimes, I mean, first of all, there's a lot of places to go, but a ton of competition right now. Right. Um, and that for us at the end of the day, as I had said earlier, is what best serves the story. You probably find the same thing too, Larry, correct? Or yeah, I mean, I, I think it's the same philosophy, you know, as it, I think it's like a proof of concept philosophy. It's like, you know, you don't need to go out and make an entire series on your own to see if it works. You can go out and make a pilot episode. And I think that's the great thing about shorts is they can really serve as a pilot episode for a web series. Um, and if, you, if you're able to build enough interest based on your proof of concept, your sort of pilot episode, that's, that's always how at SXM we've sold everything that we've ever sold, um, unless it's something where a network, an online network or a brand came directly to us to develop something. It was always based on an already existing property where a filmmaker had made something really incredible that we could go and we could show a network or we could show a brand and say this is our idea and how we would expand on it. This is the talent that comes attached to it. Um, and I think there is beauty in that in that for an investor or a network and knowing that this is the team that already made this great piece of content. We know that it's going to be executed exactly the same way if we move it to series. Um, and I think it's it's true for a lot of you guys as filmmakers. You know, I see a lot of younger filmmakers who are like, I want to make my feature, I want to make my feature. Well, if you haven't mastered your short filmmaking yet, then you probably shouldn't go out and make a feature. Um, so it's kind of how I see it. Okay. Um, Great, um, Efren. So you've been acquiring, you know, films through Shorts HD for the past four years. Um, can you give us an example of a short that actually went on to become a feature film that you might have seen, or an example of a filmmaker whose short you acquired that went on to have mainstream success? Oh well, <clears throat> there's, uh, you know, uh, a lot of these filmmakers. Uh, you know, we all start out making short films, and there, there has been the successful short film that eventually becomes a feature. Um, I'm trying to remember, I'm, I'm so bad with names and titles, we go through so many short films, that, you know, over, uh, I think in a year, over like 600 hours of content that we acquire. But, um, the, was it two years ago, the Oscar winner for the, um, um, the live action short film? Um, you recall the title of the... Okay, I'm bad with, but he ended up, uh, after winning the Oscar for that short film, he ended up uh, creating his uh, feature film, based loosely on the on the short film. Um, also, uh, another one that I could think of is uh, Johi Fukunama. Uh, he uh, did a short film called uh, Victoria Paracino, and ended up, uh, he ended up going into the Sundance screenwriting program came out uh, writing a, a feature film from uh, called Sin Nombre, and then now he was uh, directing the series of um, uh, Beast with no, uh, without, a, without a Nation, No Nation, the Netflix, yeah. So he's, a, he's another, another talented filmmaker that came out of uh, making short films. Uh, Gerardo Naranjo as well, he was uh, recently, uh, he, he did several shorts and came out of AFI as a film student. Uh, he went on to also, he was directing the series of uh, Narcos from, for Netflix. So yeah, I mean, it, it's a starting point, you know. I mean, I, I think we all start at short films and with the hopes of, you know, uh, directing uh, our feature or, or creating series or, you know, TV content, so. That's great, thank you. Um, Katja, um, so you were able to get a top manager in Hollywood based on your short film. Um, can you share with this how it happened? And also, is your European background, do you feel if that's a help or a hindrance? Okay. Um, yes, so, um, yeah, well, I, I, I wanted to make a feature film. And um, 
at some point in the process, I decided a, a short film was a better start. So um, how it happened was that I, I made it, and of course with the help of a lot of people, and um, it was just actually random that I thought that it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. And um, it's just like the insecurity of a filmmaker. You've, you've put so much effort into it, and then you sort of despise it at some point, and you're like, oh my god, this is sh just it's shit and um, and so when I came here a year ago uh, a friend introduced me to um, her actually her management and she said show, show the film show the film because she really loved it and of course that was like a very scary moment for me to just walk into the office and have him sit in the room and watch my film I was dying 10 minutes and um, and then he came out and he was just looking at me and he said, well, that was very powerful. And I was just like, he liked it? I was just, I was so surprised. I, I just couldn't believe it. And um, so that sort of started the relationship. And it was actually at the moment that I thought I was ready to have support in my career that I recontacted him and then say, hey, this is where I am in my career. I'm actually doing a lot of things myself and I'm quite happy where I am, but I'm ready for the next step. What do you think? You want to be part of my team? And then he was like, yes. So, so it's like, I think in, in that sense, it, made, it helped me. Um, uh, I, I, I think, I believe the decision is up to you. Uh, in a way, of course, you have to work hard and, and go through that whole process of, uh, you know, your first films. Um, but yeah, so that's how it happened, to be short. Oh yeah, and then about my European background. I think um, that, you know, work-wise, it is not very helpful, you know, with the visa things. Uh, but I think it's helpful in the sense that you bring something authentic, you know, something different. Um, because filmmaking industry in Holland, where I'm from, is very different than it is here. It's more focused on, like, I think, the art and, like, art house films and less so much on, like, you know, commercial. And I think the combination is the key. But, um, yeah. That's great. Cool. So, Devora, um, so you started making short films and then you segued into a lot of, you know, executive and, you know, producing jobs. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about how your process and how making short films prepared you for the larger projects you worked on? Okay, great. Thank you. Great question. Um, I was making shorts, really, uh, in, in high school. I think the first one was called Seymour's Topless Mortuary. <laughs> and I starred. I had long hair, and I, I figured the, the paper mache foot with ketchup on it would get the guys, or that would get the girls, and then the, <laughs> the guys would come because they, wow, did, did she expose herself? No, I started early, and that was, I had no intention really of being a filmmaker, but as things progressed, I uh, decided that I would, wanted to direct, but the way to directing was to become a studio executive. <laughs> no, but I learned a lot of tricks along the way, and I kept directing theater, and then oddly directing theater, I met a manager who wanted to represent me for film. And then that led to representation. Uh, actually, it led to me getting a grant uh, for a short film called Peacock Blues, starring Poppy Montgomery and Bill Forsyth for Showtime. And then I got branded as the woman, the go-to woman about tattooing. It was about a, a tattoo artist who just gets out of prison and meets a woman and convinces her to tattoo her back, and it's a love story. And um, it, it won a bunch of awards, and, uh, and somebody saw that film at William Morris and then started putting me with um, other people who wanted to develop a series set in that world of tattooing. So we developed a series with Quentin Tarantino's company, a dramatic series. And then uh, from there, I, did a, I actually did a reality show for FX, at least a pilot, which um, didn't fly, but it was a great experience. Um, and, and then that led to, um, I was always writing features and writing shorts. And then I suddenly realized, gosh, I know a lot about this, and I love the medium. And so I wrote a book on writing shorts, which I have here. <laughs> and then that, um, actually, I, I wrote that rather entrepreneurially to see if I could start teaching. Um, I thought if I have a book, then I more, have more credibility. And um, that led to just, just working with students and loving that. And so ultimately, what happened is my short 
led me to getting a feature um, job directing in the Ukraine, uh, a comedy feature. And um, at the moment, I'm, I'm sort of juggling, uh, based on all the sort of experience that I have and the content that I've developed, both as a producer and a writer and director, just juggling sort of one foot in the river of, of educating and kind of helping the, the next generation really discover their voice as artists, and then also, you know, continuing to develop my voice. Is that, is that helpful? Yes. And so, <laughs> sort of, okay, yes. So how does making shorts then lead to your brand, make, you know, forming your own brand and stuff? Okay, so in shorts, you have this incredible opportunity, if you take it, to really explore how you see the world that's different from anyone else. Where would you put the camera? How do you work with actors? What kind of story content attracts you as a filmmaker? And then you can begin to put that out there and it's almost like a magnetic beam that brings your audience to you. And, um, and then you can build on that. You can see, OK, here's what people are responding to. And, and here's, where I'm, here's where I'm strong. And here's where I'm weak. And you just build. But I think shorts, as everyone has said on the panel, is like you have to cut your teeth on something shorter so you can build. And then also building your brand, um, despite yourself, really there is an essence of you in everything that you create. And it starts to get kind of more and more mass. And you build a portfolio and a website and you get you talk to other filmmakers. I mean, like I just got, um, just through a total fluke, I'm now working on two shorts for an, a South Indian a director. That's leading to another job writing a feature in India. So it's like, it's completely random. Um, they sought me teaching a class and then they, you know, during my class I kind of act, I cry, I could cry on cue if you want me to. And they said, wow, are you an actress? And, and they said, you're perfect for my film. And that is anyway. So you don't, the main thing is in building your brand, you can't control it. You need to be aware kind of of what your competitive edge is and there's ways to do that. You know, I work as a coach in my company, The Script Broker, where I, I help people define what is their distinct edge. And that's a lot of fun. So you build your brand just by doing it. Just keep doing it. Don't stop. Cool. Great. So now I'm going to um, have a question that I'm going to direct to Larry, Noam, and Efren. And so I, this is, you know, basically regarding shorts or web series. You know, like, um, what do you see that is special about the filmmakers in their films, you know, in the ones that either go on to get representation or move to the next level? And let's start with Noam, since he's closest. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think, uh, speaking to Deborah's point, uh, the difference between quote unquote success or failure is just tenacity. I mean, at the end of the day, I, uh, you know, so much of the notion of short films that someone might post to the web are really a function of, well, how many views did I get? And, you know, all these other intangible variables that have as much to do with your ability to master social media and know how to market and do all these other things. But w we're at a really exciting inflection point in the platform by which stories can be told. You know, there's obviously this notion of you know, the history of this industry is told by, you know, maybe people that look like me, white males of a certain age. And, you know, we're finally at a point where streaming platforms and new ways and modes of expression are creating opportunities and the elevation of voices for historically marginalized people. So that means that people in the LGBT community have platforms and ways to tell their stories and reach a mass audience. And people of color and the disabled community. And to me, what's of particular importance is that the people who are succeeding are the ones who are really focused on authentic voices and authentic stories. We don't need any more cop, lawyer, or doctor shows. Definitely. Um, and I think, you know, whether it's Issa Rae, who started with Awkward Black Girl and now has a show on HBO, or you know any measure of other people, it's just such an exciting time because great people who would never have quote unquote gotten the opportunity in the traditional studio system now do. That's great, Larry. Um, I think, honestly, I think the reason why most of you are probably making a short and most people all over the world are probably making a short is to show what you can do, to show someone, hey, this is my idea, number one, this is my idea, 
And number two, I executed it in a way that gives you confidence in me that I can do this professionally. Um, so I think it's really those two parts. When I talk to, um, on the new filmmaker side of what I do, aside from the production company, SXM, that I work with, we're putting filmmakers, short filmmakers forward for opportunities at studios and networks all the time. As a matter of fact, we just placed um, two filmmakers, uh, one right out of AFI Film School, um, she had done a short uh, that was nominated for a Student Academy Award. We placed her with a pilot at Disney based on her short, literally just based on her short. She went in, she pitched after they watched the short through our organization, and she got the pilot. We sent another filmmaker, didn't go to film school, probably in his late 30s. This was the first short that he had made. He also landed a pilot at Disney Channel. So I think you have to go into making a short knowing what you want out of the short. There are, again, going back to those two things. You want to show people what you can do, and you want to show them your ideas. Those are the two valuable things when we speak to studios, and we speak to networks, and we speak to agencies. And as a matter of fact, most agencies that we talk to, even agents who traditionally, above the line agents who represent writer, director, producers, they're not as interested in representing directors for hire anymore. They're interested in representing people who have really strong, good ideas because that's what they can make money from. It's become harder and harder for agents at these big agencies, unless you're a television director or something like that, to be able to make and earn consistent revenue from you. Um, and you have to understand, once you get to that level, I mean, that's what people are looking at when they consider working with you, is how is this person going to help to make my company money? Um, and that's not what it's about. It's about them wanting somebody who has a good idea and somebody who can execute that idea well. And as a director or a producer, you have to be able to lead a team. You have to be able to get out of your crew what you want to see in your scene, what you want to see in your short. So um, it, I think it's about being a leader, being really smart about what you want to achieve, your vision, and telling a really interesting story. And I think. And that all sums up to showing what you can do. That's great. Okay, Evelyn. Yeah, just like Larry said, I mean, pretty much it's, it's, it's very important to be unique, um, just be dedicated. Um, you know, um, I remember back in my film school days when, you know, some of my classmates, we all thought we were going to come out of film school directing, you know, feature films <laughs> and, you know, you know, <laughs> getting picked up by a studio or something like that. And that's not the reality. I mean, there's the, a special occasion where at Sundance, some independent feature <laughs> film that got financed by a GoFund, you know, situation, and you know, they got the money and they, they got picked up. It happens, but it's rare. Um, you know, uh, uh, some of like the two filmmakers that I mentioned, Gerardo and uh, Fukinagawa, they, um, if I, I remember in their short films, I mean, they, they shoot, they film the same kind of thematically, the same stories. They're dedicated to that subject, you know, that, you know, and it comes out like now that, now that I see them um, directing feature films and TV series, um, it, it's kind of the same. Like it, it was their unique voice. It was something they were into and they just follow, continue filming that type, that style of, of filmmaking. Uh, you really have to be really dedicated. Short films, use it as a calling card, you know, don't, don't do it for the money because you're not going to get your money back. Um, so I mean, I think it's just being dedicated and being passionate about your story and being unique and, and you'll, you'll get there eventually. That's great. Cool. So um, this next question is for Koch and Devora and you know, maybe, you know, other you guys can join in after if, if you have a story to tell, but um, can you tell us about the projects you thought would move to the next level in your career and didn't, and then the ones that you had no expectations of and that actually gained traction? And why don't we start with Katya? Um, yes, I think, I think it's the short film that actually gave me my um, management. Uh, I had no expectations of that film. Uh, because, you know, the, the, the hate-love relationship that I had with it. Um, so that was very unexpected that that sort of went into a different direction. And um, I think what I learned from that is, 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 is like, I think as a, as, a, as a filmmaker, I mean, I see myself as an artist. We had a little talk about that. Um, it's so... Um, uh, to, to understand that there's a place for every 
project, that there's an audience for every project, and that you sort of detach yourself from what people are thinking of it. Mm -hmm. And and you know what you're saying is like it's like really just keep going, um, and don't let that stop you from making something new. It's like as soon as something's finished. Like I can't wait to start with the new project, or I'm already started with the new project. It's like it's like you just it's like an ongoing thing, um, and to yeah to, to not put too much energy in like what the film is going to do. Uh, just like put the energy in like making the film as good as you can, um, because because it will never do what you want it to do. It will always come in like a surprise package or, you know, like I put so much money into like getting this film into festivals and it didn't go to places that I wanted to go. But in a very, very alternative way, it brought me uh, ahead in my career. And yeah, like the thing that I'm still struggling with is, you know, how to get your project see the light of day. You know, that's that's like, you know, you can make something, but how does it get somewhere? You know, that's, it's like, a, it's a whole different, um, I mean, I don't know if there's anybody who knows <laughs> more about that. Um, but um, yes, well, and, and what, what else was the question oh, like? Oh, and then, um, I think you answered it. Yeah, I answered it, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. okay Devorah? I mean, I think uh, what's hardest for someone who has the sensitivity and desire to be an you know a filmmaker an artist is that we have so little control over the we have control over the origin we have control over the content and we have control over making a product that can be as good as we can make it with an awareness of of marketplace like okay yes try to get actors that have some uh, value in the market. I mean, why not shoot for somebody if you have relationships through six de degrees of, you know, separation to get a great actor that also has some buzz going on. I mean, that brings more eyes to your project. But ultimately, you have to accept that it's going to happen in a way that surprises you. Um, and my husband, who is also a, a writer and um, who we've worked on projects together, and he said Hollywood, um, really filmmaking, is like a closed box. There's no windows, there's no doors, you just keep circling it. And one day, a window opens up, or you fall into a door, and you're in. And you never know, it could be, you know, I'm uh, working with a, an Indian actress right now, and we just got her a manager, and I, I never, never, you know, I haven't ever vouched for someone in this way with this manager, but she just was so wonderful. And... Um, I was talking to her because the feedback when she met the manager is that she's really impatient. She thinks she's going to make it tomorrow. And so I had to say, it, it could happen tomorrow, but it could take 10 years. And you just have to keep making those relationships and keep, you know, keeping it going. Um, and it does, it happened for me in very random ways. It seems like Katya, same thing. I mean, I have a, a documentary that I put on ice for 16 years because I was a little scared of the content, frankly. And now it's time has come and people are interested and, you know, so hang on to all those ideas, keep creating new ideas. And I think that there is no fast way in except to have awareness, have awareness of um, your value your, for lack of a word, your, your sort of divine spark, whatever it is, and just keep building on that. And don't be scared about, you know, putting your material out there, having, having screenings, having read-throughs when you finish a short, short script. Have actors come over and read the script, vet it. Make sure it's ready to shoot. Um, you know, interview not just your best friend who's a cinematographer, interview two other people. You know, be open to what the actors bring to it. So everybody in, it's this wonderful collaboration, and out of that, something amazing, some miracle happens and your career begins to take off, as long as you don't, you know, kill yourself beforehand. That's, that's <laughs> well, no, I don't yeah. think, well, no one's gonna do that. Take suicide realm. out of the picture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, does anybody else have anything that they wanna comment? If you feel like killing yourself, call me, okay? No, okay. anyone else wanna say anything? It is hard, isn't it, right, guys? It I mean, you, yeah. I, I don't know, I don't know if this, I don't know why I wanna say, I just think that the, the, the utmost important thing is is like the authenticity what you want to say i just want to emphasize on that 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 you know it's so tempting to sort of look around too much what other people are doing and you you lose track you 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 watch 
your projects, not from your inside to it, but like from with outside eyes. I don't know if it makes any sense. You're, you're but, actually diluting yeah. your spark because you're yeah. trying to please other people versus yeah. being a truth seeker. Yeah, it and don't. Really, really trying to say, what is my truth that's different from anyone else out there? It's yeah. true. I, I think that that it's is the, truth. the most important <laughs> thing. <laughs> like, and, 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 and so many people will tell you otherwise. And everybody, like now, if the Queen of Holland tells me I cannot do anything, I will just laugh in her face because, I, like, I can I can only rely on myself and like what I think is the next step to take, you know. And there will always be people on your way who will support you. And there will also a lot of people uh, on your way who work against you. Like up until this day, I have to deal with these types. And at some point, you just know it, and you can you can you find the good ones. Do you yeah. know the Queen of Holland? Of course I know the Queen of Holland. <laughs> well, that's good. Thank you. That's a, that's she's wonderful. lovely. She's from Argentina, actually. Yeah, I she's know. lovely. Well, <laughs> well, I think she it's great. Mm. Yeah, she married into, yeah. yeah. And just a side comment um, regarding the whole Hollywood being in the box. It's so, I mean, it's, it seems like such a big industry, but at least for me, I've always run into the same people over and over that I started when I was a film student and I was interning at some place. Eventually, I would, you know, we will be working at a project, or um, it's always, it's, it seems like a, such a small community of the of the people doing, you know, constantly just working, whether it be short films or features or TV series. I'm always running, like, I'll visit friends at, at the studio lot at Fox, and I'll run into some guy that I used to work with at Sony Studios, and you know. It seems like a big industry, but you're always going to run into the same people. So always, you know, try to network and keep in touch and just keep working. Just keep keep at it and, you know, and have your unique voice. Can, can I just say one thing? We, we haven't really talked about it. I, I loved what you had to say about what are the ingredients, um, you know, to what uh, can get you. But I think what we haven't talked about is a little bit about, you know, how you interact with other humans. Um, and the sort of the the attitude of gratitude, not like you know, fake smiles, but I mean sincerely, you know, trying to connect on a human level with people, and not being entitled, um, you know, like oh wow, you know, you should give me the shot because, you know, I am just fucking hot, okay, <laughs> you know, and it just it just doesn't work. Your work will speak for you, but if you go into that room, and I, I, you know, when I was a studio executive, I had uh, these two wonderful writers who I were so talented, and um, I knew them as friends as well, and I brought them into a meeting, and the executive, who was from Argentina, um, was giving like notes, but in the most cruel, mean way. And I saw my writer friend, his energy just kind of get more and more angry and negative, and I said, okay, this deal is blown. It's not gonna happen. And so I saw a side of him that I hadn't seen and um, this is why working with people on short films is you get to know who you want to work with forever. You know, you'll see, and I, I said, wow, this is somebody who has this... Yeah, but you can't, can't really... roll with the notes. You don't know it necessarily. Right, and yeah. you can't predict how... You know, there's no way that you can predict how somebody's going to be. I mean, you know, like, I mean, I've been in, you know, meetings myself when somebody says something that you know, like that puts you on the spot. And I mean, even the other day on a film I'm involved with and, you know, these producers are taking it over and my friend was the producer and, you know, I wasn't expecting them to put, to, you know, to put me on trial about his involvement. And, you know, I wasn't, you know, I sort of, it wasn't my best thing. I mean, normally I'd be like, you know, like a little You're bit, so good. You help, you a little, so bit, many a little bit smooth, but I, you know, <laughs> I found an you. edge in my voice and I, took a note of that afterwards and I just because you know because I have to work with these people too and I just said you know next time you know I'm going to be better I'm not going to um you know react because you know the point of the matter is everything you know when you're working on a project too things are alive so just like that person that can be super critical they can also be you know swayed in a different direction if, as well if you if the, if the writer had just sat there quietly and just said interesting point let me think about it right just and then genuinely got curious about how are they going to solve this problem he could go home and say fuck you excuse my french but yeah you know to up to the executive but don't do it energetically in the room you know and don't do it to their face i mean there are people that are successful that do have that attitude i can say they somehow survive 
Um, so, <laughs> That's cool. But, yeah, Great. anyway. Okay, so just wanted to open it up to you guys now. Do you guys have questions? Anybody? Yes. Is there, is there any tips that you would like to give to us, like for us beginners, like act in acting or in screenwriting? Is there any advice for us? Like, you I think everybody could. Sure. Well, I, the first thing I would say is just do it, and and <laughs> the it means that every opportunity you have to go out and shoot material or connect with other filmmakers, either here. Do you go here? Oh no, I'm uh, going already. I go. Got it. Is it a film school or? Um, no, it's a community college. Right. Um, I just finished doing a screenwriting. I'm going to be working at like a, 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 a position at the University of Monterey. So it sounds like you're sort of already doing it. But look, at the end of the day, there's there's people who talk about what they're going to do and people who do what they're going to do. So I, I would say be more of the latter and less of the former. Well, I thought it was interesting. You asked if anybody had questions. And does anybody else have questions? Oh, good. OK. I was going to say, that's something, I, because I teach at a film school, so many of our students, I'll bring in different industry professionals from major studios and stuff. And they have this opportunity to ask these people questions and connect with them. And a lot of times, they don't do it. So I'd say that's one of the biggest pieces of advice I would give, is just always feel free to ask questions to people. Um, always feel free to engage with people. Don't ever feel like you can't go up and say hello to somebody. Um, we're really, really lucky because you live in Northern California. Um, where I teach is in Northern California. We're lucky because we're in LA. So you guys have like limitless opportunities to put yourself out there all the time and meet people and connect with people and learn. Um, so in addition to those two things, I would say um, make sure you learn everybody's job on a film set. If you want to be the producer, learn what the grip does, learn what the gaffer does, learn what the DP does, learn everybody's job. If you want to be the writer, learn everybody's job. If you want to be the director, learn everybody's job. It's really, really important because mm -hmm. um, you guys are all going to be part of a team. And then once you've learned everybody's job, decide ultimately what you want to do. Don't decide that you want to be a cinematographer and an editor. Don't decide that you want to be an actor and a producer and a writer. Just I mean, you can do that, but there's so much competition, and everybody needs to be so honed in on their skill, whatever that skill is, that you really have to be the best and make yourself the best and focus on that. And it's like you said with tenacity, like just going, going, going for that thing that you really want and being the best that you can be at it, I think is really, really important. Just like they said, I mean, pretty much just do it. Don't talk about it. Just keep focus and do your screenwriting. Um, do learn all the positions and everything. I think that's one thing that really helped me in my career. Um, I was never unemployed because whether uh, the next project was they needed a producer or they needed a writer or they needed a gaffer. I was always available. I knew everything. I knew all the positions. Um, like Larry said, do know what you want to eventually focus on. Um, because there is so much competition, and you know you gotta kind of show what your, your like your genre, like what's you know you gotta be specific and let other people know like exactly what you're good at, what your main um, genre is, and you know. But yeah, just just stay focused and keep doing it, and um, and, and learn everything. I mean, I deal with so many filmmakers that are, are when we acquire a film, and um, sometimes they. They don't know what, like we, we have specific specs for the files that we need and they don't know what, what I'm talking about. They look at me like, I'm a director. I, I don't, I'm like, I'm a director too. And I know what, you know, like what files I'm looking for or what I need. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a little, you know, um, it, it's, and it's gonna save you a lot of money if you know just every, you know, position. I mean, when you're working on a project, your own project, Maybe your editor will flake on you and, you know, you got to edit the stuff yourself and you can jump on the software, whatever program you use, and edit the film yourself. And so it's, it's, no, it, it's good to know everything. Yeah, I think, I think that's another really good point that uh, Ephraim brought up is that it, really it's, it's you brought up deliverables. deliverables. And I think that translates also to festivals. Like if you're going to start going on a festival circuit, no what festivals are the right festivals for your film, like have done a bit of research, like look at what the festival has programmed before. If you're submitting your horror drama film to 
like a comedy film festival, then you're just throwing away $50, right? And if you don't have your, your sort of marketing plan ready for a festival, you don't have your assets ready for a festival, festivals need certain things. They need trailers, they need press kits, they need stills, they need all of these things, and they need them in certain formats to help you get press on your film, to help you do all these. Um, working with new filmmakers, we have so many filmmakers that come through the festival where they're like great storytellers and they've, they've done a great job with their shorts, but they come through the festival and they're just like a nightmare to work with, they're disorganized, they contact you a day before the festival, oh, where is it again? Like, you know, just these kinds of things that are just red flags when you're gonna wanna refer that person later for an opportunity for a pilot at Disney Channel or for a director fellowship with Ryan Murphy, you don't wanna do it because you had a bad experience with them and you're not gonna wanna refer that person for another opportunity. So it, it goes for saying like with anything you guys are gonna do, plan ahead and do your research and do your homework. Like if you're, if you're planning to try to find distribution for your short film, start thinking about that before you make the film. So it's just thinking ahead. Okay, I'm Katja and then we'll get to you. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. oh you no, you go ahead. Okay. So I think you have to do it to become it and to become it, you have to do it. So, you know, everybody's talking about the it factor. I mean, you can't decide that you have the it factor. I mean, other people will, you know, my mother's an actress and a long time ago she said, look, the, they're gonna decide for you. So just, just, you know, do it, make it happen. Um, as far as my uh, thing, I think just to show some examples, like get, you know, get some art. You know, if you're gonna just show your short film, create, uh, you know, a, a cover for your digital piece. Um, you know, whether it's a documentary, sorry, this one for a documentary, you know, VHS format. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of money to create, you know, something that will be catchy and again, help get eyeballs on your project. You know, if somebody's looking, I, I you know, I, usually when I teach a class about marketing, I show this is something that somebody just sort of threw on my desk, handwritten, versus somebody that gave me a, a DVD that had some really nice art on it. It shows that they care. So. The other point I wanted to make is be curious um, just to, if you can get on a set and you know someone that's running a set um, at a studio or a network, I mean, I made it my point, I knew I want, it was gonna maybe take me 20 years to direct my first feature, but I wanted no one to bullshit me. I wanted to know every single job, so I would always, when I had a job at a studio, I would spend my lunches and my evenings and my mornings just walking into people's offices. What do you do? How does it work? Um, you know, I was on uh, the set of uh, Lethal Weapon, I guess, which uh, Mel Gibson was doing his first directing thing. Or no, no, Dick Donner was directing and, and Mel, but, but I got to watch them like set up this ver very, very elaborate shot. And then the director, Dick said, uh, he turned to the cinematographer, he says, we actually don't need to shoot that. And this was like after four hours of, of a lot of money spent setting up a crane and money that was gonna fall out of the sky. And so, my curiosity was why would the director say we don't need the shot after you know spending well, his crew spending a half day and so i walked up to the cinematographer and i said i, I want to ask you um what why did he not do the shot and he said well i understand why he, he got the story point and um he's right and so he wasn't mad but I, I would not have known that uh, if I hadn't, and I also got that great attitude of the DP saying, you know, yeah, my director's right. He wasn't grumpy, you know, he just did a great job. So, but be curious, ask everyone. You know, we're, we're here, it's just like you said, you know, take a moment, find out how you can hook in, how you can connect, you know, how to stay in touch, you know. Okay, that's it. That's links, links to your work, to people you meet. Oh, catch your eye. Oh. Um. Yeah, no, well, I can just add to that is, yeah, like, have coffee with everybody. <laughs> That's the, and because also I think that... Um, and bring cookies. And bring cookies. You can, you can treat them. That because it's like... But some people don't like sugar. So make sure <laughs> yeah, it's gluten-free. Yeah, gluten-free cookies. <laughs> sugar-free cookies. <laughs> um, because... I think, I mean, it's, 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 I speak for myself now, I don't know, but like, that's what I did. I was just like, and when I first came, when I came here a year ago, I, everybody, I just, uh, 
you know, knew or asked everybody, do you know anybody? Can I just, and not to want something, but just to get information and just to sustain the contacts. And because, and now I get calls of people if I want to have go coffee with them. And I'm like, of course, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like you, I mean, that's how, how I became better and how I still become better. And, and you know we we have to help each other and uh, yeah and everybody wants to help each other the good ones i think so yeah. well you'll know if somebody does or doesn't pretty yeah. quickly yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. so good. yes um, i was going to ask if you guys have any major turnoffs for when you watch a short film and you immediately know it sucks like not you know you probably the camera work or something or the story sounds that's a picture like, yeah oh, this is bad bad sound Sound is really important, and spend the time to do that correctly. So. How about story points? If um, well, it depends on the length of the short film. Like if it's a ten-minute short film, and I'm already into two and a half minutes into the short, and I don't know a clue of what the char who the characters are, or where the story is going, it it's basically I, I you know I it's a big turn off. I'll watch the whole short, but. Right away, I know it, the story is not going to be good. When they focus a lot on their camera work, and because they got this cool camera or this cool um, drone that, you know, and uh, you know, it's you got to focus really on the story. And in a short film, you really got to get to the point really quick. And and also, you know, bad uh, camera work or a shot that's out of focus, or you know, when it makes you look very amateur, you know, then yeah, that, that's you got to. You know, when you do your first short, you got to make sure that all oh, that is good, you know, the quality of the sound and production-wise, you know, that. Can I see I think there's, there's four killers. Sound, definitely, number one. That's, the, that's one of the biggest killers I see for shorts. Performance, your actors, really, really, really important. Your story and your camera work. Those four things are probably the four most crucial things to making something that's going to like get your work noticed and get it seen. And honestly, I would really say second to sound is probably performance. Like I've seen so many shorts with good stories and good sound and good camera work, but the performance is so poorly done, um, it's so badly cast, or the actors are just not up to par to where they need to be. Um, so take time with your casting and really like do real, don't just, especially as student filmmakers, don't only consider actors that you go to school with. Do a real casting, like put out a breakdown through the breakdown services um, and bring in a lot of actors. If you don't get a lot of actors your first time, don't feel rushed into production. Do another casting session and another casting session um, until you get the actors that are right. And um, know that you probably are not going to get good sound unless you pay for it. Um, that's just the truth. Absolutely. So you just kind of have to spend some money. In order to get good sound, you have to pretty much pay for it, you know? There, yeah, there's just no way that a, a student holding a, a boom for the first time is going to know, even if they've been taught to hold it a certain way, they're not going to be able to ride the, the, the different levels to know when it's hot or when you need to, you know, how, again, because they're already thinking about post. How are they going to EQ it? How are they going to actually make it rounder or... And you need a professional in that arena, I think. And performance, take the time to cast it. I, my first uh, short film when I was at Cal Arts, I lost Ed Harris, who was not a star at that time. He was just a fabulous actor. And he said, I'm sorry. And so uh, I rushed to cast someone. And he was a very good actor, but just not, you know, there was always a hole in it. And so I, you know, I really couldn't use that short in the way that I had wanted to. I mean, you just move on, but you learn the lesson. Like, yes, casting is super important. Not just even a fabulous actor, but a fabulous actor for the story that you're trying to tell. So, yeah. There was also, like, you know, somebody approached me earlier this year, a filmmaker, Nat from Los Angeles, you know, wanted to hire my company, and, you know, he thought he made this wonderful short, and he wanted to segue it into um, being able to, you know, pitch a faith-based film. and. I watched the short and there was no, it was like a silent movie with all this S&M in it. And it was like, the actors were like really bad. And it was like, I mean, and it was, there was no story. And I, I mean, 
And to me, you know, so for, and then he, you know, said, you know, can you help me like market this and I can go to Sundance? And I said, no, I mean, I said, you know, I don't think so. I mean, the people don't even talk in the movie. We have like no idea. But also, you know, you have to have common sense. I mean, something like that is not going to get you a job directing a faith-based movie, you know, just based, <laughs> it was so ridiculous. So anyway, you just... <laughs> <laughs> so Unless your just, God is like right. a blessing. <laughs> I mean, so you. I mean, I think that Ugh. you have to be able to look at things and like project out and see what makes sense and what's viable. But also, you know, and also like, I mean, but you know, if you feel that your movie should be a silent movie, you know, it has to really merit it <laughs> on that level where you know can work on all the levels too. So, anyway, does anybody else have a question? Yes. Um, it kind of goes into the distribution process of films. I feel like I'm a director, so I feel like I'm evolving with every film that I make, and I make them very quickly. So I'm in the situation where I feel that my heart is with uh, the most recent one and not the previous one, and I don't think the previous one is bad. I just don't feel as strongly connected to it anymore. Um, more on a visual level than an emotional level, but visuals are super important to me from a photography background. So I'm curious as to like, at that point, do I find someone else to help with distribution that might care more than me, but at a student level, because I graduated six months ago, as students, you, you like the director is a huge part of the distribution because no one cares about your film more than you do. So at that point, like how, like, have you been in that situation before? If so, how do you motivate yourself to get like back in that headspace to want to put that out there? A lot to unpack there, but Sorry, no, yeah. no, that I'm that's really fine. So, yeah. so I, I mean, let's sort of talk about a couple things. First and foremost nobody's going to care about your work more than you. So if you don't care about it, then I think that if there's some aspect of previous work that isn't resonating with you, then I would respectfully submit that that shouldn't be your focus. Um, having said all that, do you have a website? I do. And Sorry. would that not be an opportunity, do you think, to put your content up? Yeah, I feel like I do have a brand. Do you, do you have a YouTube channel? I don't do YouTube. I okay. Just put it on Vimeo all right. I mean, look, the d distribution sort of is, has a couple of competing imperatives to it. One is getting people to see your work, and one is finding a way to monetize your work. So if at this point it really is, uh, you know, as you've heard many people on this panel say about building up your brand and just getting your material out there, use kind of the low-hanging fruit, the resources that are available to you that don't really cost anything, and that obviously can include a website, certainly social media, you know, have a presence in those arenas in that regard. Um, and I, 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 obviously I don't know anything about you, but I think that the totality of your arc as an artist and someone who's still and will always continue to be evolving and maturing in that regard is important. So perhaps you, it might benefit you to just reframe some of your thinking, which is just to say you've got content you've got a platform in which you can put that material and that your objective at this point should just be get people to see who you are, what you've done, and it may spark seeds of other ideas for potential collaborators that may come forth at, at a certain time. And uh, don't lose, think of the macro, not the micro, and what I mean by that is it's not at this point in your career about any one project, it's about you. And the brand of you is the thing you did six months ago, the thing you did six weeks ago, and the thing that you're going to do a year from now. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. I think maybe, yeah, just putting it on your website isn't the worst thing. Cause if Not at all. Yeah, people look at that. I'm just, you know, because I've like talked about it, and they're like, no, you should submit it because it's a good opportunity. <laughs> but it's like, I could just put it on my website. Yeah. So, but that's all been like student perspective. So it's good to like hear perspective outside. I mean, you can also create a blog about what you learned from it. So you have, you know, you get eyeballs as a young filmmaker. One of the uh, young actresses, I watched her get uh, representation, um, very high, high level representation, and 
what she did is she just continued to blog and she called it Midnights with Mimi or something like that. And she would go to a coffee, coffee shop every uh, midnight and she would write for a half hour about her experiences as a filmmaker and, and an actress. And, and, it, and, and then it took hold. Um, it became this, this other thing about her work. So talking about you know, this very question that you have. You just made yourself very vulnerable, but it might be something that you share just even your thinking about your own evolving, emerging, you know, artistic consciousness. You know, why don't I care about the baby at the side of the road? You know, someone else may pick that baby up and care about it. So, you know, and then people will write in and they'll respond and they may give you ideas just like you, you opened yourself up to, to us. Yeah. Well, I just want to say that I completely recognize it. So it's like, you know, it's, it's like a hard thing. Uh, like what I said earlier, like as soon as a project is done, I just want to make something new again and apply all the things learned and make something better, um, which I think is a good thing because it means like you're really like, this is what you want to do. Um, so I have that question myself as well. Uh, I, I think now, because now I'm in the process of like making a new film and hopefully we're shooting in two weeks, but I do know now that I'm already, what, what you said as well, thinking about, okay, how are we going to distribute it? Where is the film going to be? So you don't have to wonder about it at, you know, after the film is done. You already thought about it, so then when the film is done, you already know the answer, you know? So either you already have someone who's going to help you execute or distribute your film, you already thought about where is the film going to live after it's finished, you know? So you can then move on to the next project. And I mean, that's what I've learned from my experiences. And I also have this, my last film, it's like drifting in space somewhere, you know? Like, that's how I feel. Like, it's, it's like, uh, because I don't know where to place it because I did not think about it in advance. It's like a 30 minute black comedy based of a theater play that is like, I don't know, like who would, like I organized the short film contest, uh, contest back in Holland and I didn't even program it because I thought it's too long. It's too long, you know? So I, I created it for all these other filmmakers and I didn't, program my own last film. Uh, so yeah, that's something, my lesson, that I had to think about that before I was going to shoot it. So um, I think that is just... Distribution first. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that's totally like vital information. Yeah. And so then as well, it's like, you know, if you already build your portfolio and, you know, you get people on board who say, okay, I have this great idea. We need to think about this right now. You, are you on my team? And then people also start to recognize your talent and they want to work with you and they're like, this is a great idea. Like, I'm going to help you distribute it. Yeah, let's do it. And you make a plan and you go. Something like that. <laughs> um, you know, it'll, it'll drop from space eventually. I hope so. It's just like, it's just lingering and I'm like, I don't know. Or maybe like digit, there's so many digital distribution platforms as well that I think are great actually. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Like yeah. It's like, it's really good. And you know, it's like, there's so much going on there as well on that aspect. And you know, just because it is, it costs a lot of money to d submit it to festivals, you know? It's like, it, it's, it's very expensive. So put, if, if you think, okay, I don't have that money, you can put it on a digital distribution platform and then maybe it will be picked up. At least it shows your work. I, I don't know, like there's different options. Well, I think you also have to develop ways to help yourself, like, you know, um, you know, I work with a lot of different, you know, films and filmmakers and, you know, the people that tend to be really the most successful are the ones that really have great social media, especially, you know, with all the type of distribution. I represented a documentary about actually the whale from Free Willy and when we did our first Kickstarter campaign, you know, on that film to, you know, we were going to do a launch in Hollywood and, you know, do it with the 20th anniversary of Free Willy. You know, they had like 30,000 likes on, um, on Facebook, now they're into the hundreds, but we had so many, like we were able to raise that money that we needed so quickly. We were able to, um, you know, attract, you know, all kinds of distribution and they've made money off that movie. And it was just basically, you know, they found different ways to get 
people to like their page. Another client of mine is a Pakistani, you know, film actor who's, you know, a star there and he's also an American citizen and, you know, on his, he has something like a million fans on Facebook and he put a short on there that half a million people watched within a week and, you know, he came up with a new film project and I, you know, I t went down the road with Sony because, and, you know, and, and he has all kinds of meetings with, you know, companies that he's developing because he has a following. So that's something that you can, you know, you can control. That's something you can, you know, it's a great, you know, now that you're a student, I think that that's something that you should really start honing that skill. I mean, because, you know, now it's just like you're like in a learning phase and you're developing your craft, but if you find ways to market, you know, your different films, you know, on like the, the Facebook or Twitter or something like that, that also really will help you know, distributors notice you too, especially like places like The Orchard or, you know, where, you know, it's basically, you know, that it's going to be people like that that are going to like, you know, look at your film. So, does anybody else add anything or any, okay. any other next question or, yes? Um, so I was wondering about funding and using crowdfunding as a source of, uh, of money for the film that you're about to make. Um, for example, like Kickstarter, are there any tips about how you market the Kickstarter campaign for the film? Um, there's a great organization called Seed and Spark. Should write that down. Seed and Spark. Seed and Spark. And they do uh, a crowdfunding um, training. They, they came and did it at our school. Um, it really teaches you that that is a job in itself mm -hmm. that you've got to dedicate an entire month to, or if not more. Um, maybe another month just in pre-planning. Um, it's a big, it's a big job. A lot of filmmakers who are successful with it put in a lot of time and have a really well laid out plan and they've scheduled their time of how they're going to manage that campaign over however many weeks or months it runs. Um, and then you've got to think about delivering everything that you've promised to all these people who have backed you at the end of it, right? So you really have to like schedule that and make sure you have a plan in place for um, a, a Kickstarter campaign or whatever kind of fundraising you're going to do. But I'd say check out Seed and Spark. Um, <clears throat> also, there's a really interesting documentary called Kickstarted. If you Google Kickstarted film, um, it's a documentary actually by a producer that uh, was one of the producers on the NBC series that I produced. Um, he's no longer at NBC, he has his own company now, but he made this documentary following, I think, three different crowdfunding campaigns and gives you a really amazing glimpse into like the ones who were successful and the time they put in and sort of the interaction that they had with the people who were giving to their campaign or that they were reaching out to to try to get to give to their campaign. Um, it's a big job to, if you want to make it successful and I would, <clears throat> I would make sure if you're going to do it, don't do it alone. Enlist like maybe four or five people who want experience in raising money or doing a crowdfunding campaign or potentially raising money for their own films in the future. Enlist them to be part of your team and give everybody a job and everybody's sort of like a voice of your crowdfunding campaign. Um, that being said, I've never done one, but I've, I've learned a lot about them from other people who have done them and I've seen the ones that were successful be very well thought through and very well planned and the ones that didn't just they didn't really have they just put it up and yeah. didn't really have a plan for it yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. well just very quickly um i met a woman recently who had produced a, a movie that uh her good friend directed and uh wrote and they wanted to go to Cannes, and they got their film got actually accepted but they didn't have any money so they did a Kickstarter campaign, which was extremely successful. They had this adorable video that was very funny that they, they shot and edited like a little short film. And um, within really a couple of weeks, they were able to raise the money. And I think it was on the strength of their personalities. And um, one of them is a hostess at a hotel. And <laughs> Somebody else runs a spa, so they, they actually befriended people that had a strong network in place that could reach out, you know, if, let's say you put together your team, right? 
and everybody on the team, you know bringing them in that they've got, you know, a thousand people they can reach. And then out of that thousand, you know, maybe you're going to get one to five people coming in for 50 bucks or 500 bucks or whatever, but you'll be able to build it. But it's, it's an awareness too of that uh, when you build your team to get people who have, you know, get also something for being on the team too, like a credit on the film, associate producer. Um, totally. Anyway, okay, that's all. Uh, okay. Be entrepreneurial as you're making the Kickstarter project. No, I, oh, sorry. No, I just want to say I've done it, <laughs> and uh, um, I've done it for my last film, and then I was running it, but at the same time I was producing, directing, acting, and doing the, a whole film and running the crowdfunding, and it was like mentally quite um, um, exhausting, but um, it's great to do it, just you have to do it at least once to know how it is, and I think the, the positive thing is that you will have, you, you know, you will already reach an audience, you create your, your network. And um, I'm now in the middle of one again for, for my upcoming film that I'm directing, but I'm not running the crowdfunding. So it's like a little less stressful for me, you know, but I do think, um, I do think it is great, but it's like, it's a lot, a lot of work. When we were doing the, um you know, the campaign to get the money for Keiko, you know, at first it was very slow because she, you know, she thought that she was just going to say and let it go and that within an hour she was going to have like $10,000 and the first day she got $40 and she was ready to cry and I said, no, you got to really engage your audience and, um, you know, so, and she had quite, a, as I said, quite a few, you know, she had been set up on Facebook and on Twitter and everything like that, you know, every day, you know, or even a couple times a day she would engage you know, about her campaign, and then one day, you know, like somebody just liked the page. He was a guy that lived in San Diego. He had a lot of money. He just said, you know, oh, this is great cause. I'm going to give you $5,000. And, you know, and then it just sort of started like a domino effect. So it's really important, you know, as everybody has said, you have to, you know, be, you know, that's got to be your job for that month, and you've got to just keep finding different ways to, you know, like, I mean, you know, one on another campaign I did for clients, we had a matching fun day where someone, one of the parents of the filmmaker said, whatever you guys make that day, we'll match it. So they made, like, you know, $8,000, and then they got the other eight from the parents. So, you know, just, you know, if you're really creative and you find ways to get people involved or to get, you know, and then, you know, and then we had another day where we said, like, why don't we get everybody that gave, ask them to put five more dollars in, you know, and that would end up giving them an extra, like, you know, $5,000 or something. So, I mean, it's just, you know, like, I mean, you know, know that you could, you know, like, just as everybody said, plan really well and come up with all the different kinds of ideas every day how to, you know, get more people involved. Okay. Um, does anybody else have questions or? Us the, uh, oh. Do we have time for the one more? Do we have time for one more question? Yeah. Okay. So, I think, oh, yeah. 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 Did anybody else have a question? Mm -hmm. It's all you. Well, I was just, okay. I was just um, wondering if there was like a website or platform you guys all had for us to do your work because I'm kind of Uh, I'll start with that. Uh, my company's website, legionofcreatives.com. Okay, cool. um, and my website is Suncat Productions, is my Dutch production company. And I put some, so S U N C A T Productions. And yeah, I put my recent film, not my recent film, but it's not nowhere to be seen. But um, <laughs> the other ones are on there, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, ours is S X M dot C O, no M. So just S X M dot C O. The most difficult, but probably it's actually also on the periodic the easiest. table of elements. Uh, as a yeah, S X M dot C O. Um, you can also go to shorts dot TV. Uh, that's uh, the movie channel I, I acquired films for. You can find out about distribution and broadcast deals and you know what, what kind of short films we look for. So, 
Um, I have a couple websites. One of them is uh, datingyourcharacter.net, datingyourcharacter.net, and then uh, I have a company called The Script Broker, so it's thescriptbroker.com. Okay, my production company is divaronpix.com. All right. And I'm lamediaconsultants.net. I'm LA Media Consultants, plural, dot net. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you guys. Feel free. It's not just here where you guys can ask questions. Like he said, don't be shy. If you guys have questions, you can also ask them out there. Thanks for coming. You guys need to. Good questions, moving it forward, really good information. Yeah, excellent. I can't believe I told the story about that too. It's really important for them. It's like you have to know what the market is. You can't think of it. Also, you can't think of you know, I mean, like anybody that runs this space, companies, if they saw that, they would be so involved. Okay. 703-2439. So nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah. How long are you yeah. here? I'm going to be here until like the oh, okay. Did I give you my card, right? No, let me give me your card. I don't. Uh, we do our own Yes, okay, that's right. Yeah, I'm good. Oh, you did give me your card. Oh, I did. Okay. You can keep it up. All right. We met before. I feel like we have. So yeah. I was their programmer for the Association of Film Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.